Hello, good morning, good good morning to everyone. My name is Sora Mishra. I'm from MSC Nursing Jitma. So without wasting our time, we'll start our energetic session in community health nursing. Today's our topic name is cholera. So the cholera is the most important condition. So we'll discuss so many things under that cholera. Whatever we'll discuss like that. So we'll start our session. Okay. Under that cholera, we are going to discuss that causative agent, causative agent, causative agent of the cholera, pathophysiology of the cholera. Sign and symptoms of the cholera and diagnostic evaluation. How to diagnose the cholera in the community settings and in the hospital settings? How to diagnose a cholera condition and how to manage a cholera in that different different ways? First one, the management we are going to discuss in the two uh, two steps. Like first one is our prophylactic way, and second one is our therapeutic way. In the prophylactic way, we are going to manage over. In prophylactic way, we are going to manage the preventions and vaccines. And under the therapeutic, we are going to be given that all the medications, all the medications to the patients. All the medications means we are totally depending on the drugs. So let us start our session. First one, that cholera. Cholera, cholera is also known as the cholera is also known as the house of cholera in west of bengal west of bengal west of bengal house of cholera is west of bengal due to this house of cholera because in the west bengal number of cases of cholera is more so due to under icmr under icmr that national national institute of Ante, uh, national institute of cholera National Institute of Cholera and Enteric Disease are established established in Kolkata. Established in Kolkata. Established in Kolkata. So after that, the causative agent of the cholera is Vibrio cholerae. It's uh, presenting in two strains: Vibrio cholerae 01 and second strain Vibrio cholerae 0139. The Vibrio cholerae 01 is monovalent type of Vibrio cholerae bacteria. And again, it's that monovalent Vibrio cholerae G1, oh, sorry, O1 bacteria is divided into that Inaba first, second Orgaba, second Orgaba, and third one is Hikoziba. Third one is Hikoziba. So monovalent Vibrio cholerae bacteria 0, 01 is again divided into three strains. The one is Inaba, one is Inaba. Second one is Orgaba and third one is Hikoziba. So this is your question. Monovalent col uh, Vibrio cholerae bacteria is divided into Inaba, Orgaba and Hikoziba. These are the monovalent bacteria strain. And the second one is the Vibrio cholerae strain. The Vibrio cholerae strain is the 0139-0139. It's a bivalent, it's a bivalent type of strain. So after that, that Vibrio cholerae, that Vibrio cholerae, that Vibrio cholerae bacteria is discovered by the a microbiologist. The name is Robert Koch. The Robert Koch. So who discovered that Vibrio cholerae bacteria? The name is Robert Koch. Robert Koch is also known as the father of father of bacteriology. Father of bacteriology. Who is the father of bacteriology? The answer is Robert Koch. And the Robert Koch gave the Koch phenomena. Koch phenomena. Coach phenomena. In that coach phenomena, you see that in the tuberculosis condition, in tuberculosis condition. So my, uh, the tuberculosis condition is also known as the coach phenomena. And coach phenomena is given by the uh, Robert Coach. And after that, and after that, that a Vibrio cholerae is a Vibrio cholerae is a type of gram negative bacteria. It's a motile bacteria, it's a motile bacteria, and it's a coma-shaped bacteria, and it's a coma-shaped bacteria, and 
that your vibrio cholerae bacteria it's a two strains are there vibrio cholerae 01 and vibrio cholerae 0139 it's a act on your small intestine small intestine small intestine or especially small intestine in your jejunum part so next question your vibrio cholerae bacteria is act on the which site of your small intestine so answer is jejunum so answer is jejunum so regarding that jejunum i will give you one a best question so we'll discuss after 2 minutes so for that jejunum after the acting on the small intestine jejunum part it's a produce exotoxin exotoxin toxins are mainly divided into two types one is the endotoxin and second one is the exotoxins so here our vibrio cholerae bacteria after acting on the small intestine jejunum part it produce the exotoxin and over a small intestine or intestine name is enteron enteron is also known as the intestine so the toxin produced by the vibrio cholerae bacteria is also known as the enteron toxin or we can say that exotoxin so exotoxin we are going to discuss about now exotoxin the exotoxin act on your small intestine small intestine part jejunum part especially jejunum part on the jejunum also its epithelium cells epithelium cells and that exotoxin inhibit your camp cycle camp cycle that camp cycle the name is cyclic adenosine monophosphate cycle this is your camp cycle that is for responsible for its a or its a function is to absorb the sodium potassium bicarbonate and water from intestinal lumen to intestinal lumen to please mute your mic please mute your mic please mute your mic and after that it's act on the small intestine lumen so it's inhibit the camp cycle so in the small intestine lumen your sodium bicarbonate potassium and water volume is increase in the your small intestine lumen so results in that prophylactic sorry sorry so results in the profuse water is there profuse water is there so it's a lead to profuse watery diarrhea after that your Uh, a small intestine or intestinal peristaltic movement is increased so that water already there in too much amount so it's a lead to profuse watery diarrhea profuse watery diarrhea and in that rice watery stool uh, sorry in that cholera the type of stool you see or you observe that rice watery type of stool rice watery diarrhea the cholera is also known as rice watery diarrhea and under that cholera you see that frequency of stool so it's a 40 or more than 40 stools per day so you just assume after more than 40 times of diarrhea the condition of patient the condition of adult the condition of child will be very dangerous so the profuse watery diarrhea especially rice watery diarrhea and frequency more than 40 times per day and cholera in we are seeing that uh, that rice watery diarrhea same like special type of diarrhea in typhoid you see that pea soup diarrhea pea soup diarrhea and same like dysentery you see that stool is or stool or blood mucus plus blood is present in your stool so like that in cholera you are seeing that rice watery diarrhea in typhoid you are seeing that pea soup diarrhea and dysentery you are seeing that mucus plus blood so on the behalf of normal observation of the stool rice watery diarrhea pea soup diarrhea mucus plus blood plus blood we can differentiate the cholera typhoid and dysentery so after that your vibrio cholerae producing exotoxin it's inhibit the our it's inhibit your camp cycle camp cycle and affect your sodium potassium channel sodium potassium channel so it's a lead to dysrhythmia so sometimes the patient complaining in the vibrio cholerae or cholera the severe dysrhythmias 
so due to this reason as the patient can be patient can be the patient can be die the patient can be die the patient can be die one more thing mode of transmission the next thing it's how to transmit from uh, source of infection to source of infection to vector or host source of infection to host how to its a transmission the mode of transmission is fecal oral route fecal oral route especially the oral route especially the oral route under that so many types of mode of transmission is there water borne disease air borne disease food borne disease so the vibrio cholerae or our cholera is especially water borne disease especially water borne disease why because we are developed uh, we are belonging to a developing countries so in the developing countries the major problem is impure water for drinking so lack of availability lack of shortage for the availability of the drinking water and also our sanitation and hygiene level is also poor or improper so our food or our water source is most majorly or mainly contaminated so that water borne disease it's lead to transmission of cholera next mode of transmission are the different different type first one you see that mode of transmission is direct and second type is indirect second type is indirect in direct the causative agent is known and host body is directly enter into the host body the causative agent the causative agent is directly enter into the host body without any help of any vector without any help of vector or source like droplet infection best example of droplet infection is currently your covid 19 vaccine sorry covid 19 sexual transmitted infection and physical contacts and inoculations it's a type of mode of transmission direct method so after that indirect way you see that with the help of some objects with the help of some objects with the help of some objects to enter into the host body like it may be animate or it may be inanimate so it may be food borne it may be water borne it may be air borne and it may be milk borne like is the best example of the zoonosis or zoonotic disease and again it's vector borne disease also vector borne disease also so under vector borne it's again divided into two types first one is your first one is your mechanical and second one is your biological second one is your biological again it's mechanical by the help of the vectors by the help of the vectors wings legs and body through its transmit into the transmit into the host body and your biological your biological your biological indirect mode of transmission is again divided into three types three types so first one you see that propagative propagative so propagative means in that causative agent in that causative agent only replication changes occur only replication changes is there no cyclical changes in the host or vector body or causative agent body so the best example is a plague best example is plague the causative agent the causative agent of plague is yersinia pestis yersinia pestis and second type of biological indirect vector borne mode of transmission the name is cyclopropagative cyclopropagative so under that cyclopropagative you are saying that replication replication and cyclical changes replication so in that causative agent replication also you see and cyclical changes is also seen best example the malaria the causative agent the female anopheles mosquito so you seen that cyclical changes from asexual cycle to sexual cycle two cycles are present in the your malarial infection during mode of transmission like that it's a cyclopropagative type of biological vector borne indirect mode of transmission next that a cyclopropagative cyclopropagative so cyclopropagative under that cyclo cyc sorry cyclogative or cy cyclogative 
the only on clinical changes are there only on clinical changes are there so here no replication of positive agent is find here no replication or replicable changes are not present in the positive agent body outside or inside of the host body only cyclical change like asexual through sexual phase or cycle so best example is the filariasis the filariasis is also known as the elephantiasis disease the filariasis is also known as the elephantiasis disease the filariasis the positive agent is voucher area bronchoptile voucher area bronchoptile next the incubation after that mode of transmission we are discussing about the more, uh, incubation period so vibrio cholera or cholera cholera incubation period is start from the few hours to few hours to five days few hours to five days in the average time we can say that it's a one to two days one to two days after that we are going to discuss that pathophysiology how to it's a spread how to it's a spread how to it's a lead a infection in a dangerous way in the after entering a host body so vibrio cholerae bacteria vibrio cholerae bacteria it's act on the small intestine after acting on the small intestine especially jejunum part or jejunum also your epithelial cells epithelial cells so before going to discuss the pathophysiology part i want to tell you something regarding jejunum jejunum because in our jejunum part of small intestine it's a bigger site for the absorption of our so many so many different different types of minerals acids like that so regarding jejunum i want to tell one mnemonic the mnemonic name is the acid ka full jug acid ka full jug acid belongs to that amino acids ca belongs to calcium plus 2 full is belongs to folic acid and jug belongs to your jejunum so acid ka full jug means most of the amino acids calcium plus 2 folic acid are absorbed or most mostly or majority part are absorbed in the your small intestine part name is jejunum so amino acids calcium folic acids are absorbed into jejunum so this is your normal information so after that acting on the small intestine jejunum epithelium so it's a produce the exotoxin this exotoxin is also known as enterotoxin and after producing exotoxin this exotoxin inhibit your cyclic adenosine monophosphate camp cycle and this camp cycles inhibition it will lead to increase the sodium increase the sodium potassium bicarbonate and h2o in your small intestinal lumen or we can say that increase loss of sodium potassium bicarbonate and water through your small intestine lumen so it's a lead to if your sodium is sodium loss is more so obviously you are seeing that hyponatremia hyponatremia potassium loss is more it means it means it's indicate the hypokalemia condition if your bicarbonate loss is more bicarbonate loss is more that time you see that metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis and hypotension also see and shock also see so first one i want to tell that shock so under that shock you see how to define that shock so everyone know how to define but i want to tell that one major facts or one important facts regarding that pulse pressure regarding that pulse pressure the normal pulse pressure is 40 mm 40 mm of hg 40 mm of hg but here when your pulse pressure is less than 20 less than 20 mm of hg less than 20 mm of hg that time it consider as a shock condition shock condition majorly your shock condition in systolic blood pressure systolic blood pressure is fall down when your systolic blood pressure is fall down too much 
so that time your pulse pressure is obviously decrease so your pulse pressure value your pulse pressure value is if less than 20 mm of bg so it's a condition is so it's a condition is so so next hyponatremia means normal value of sodium is the 135 mg equivalent to 145 mg equivalent per liter so if your value uh, the sodium value is less than 135 mg equivalent per liter is known as the hyponatremia and hypokalemia regarding that hypokalemia first one i want to tell that regarding some facts because the potassium the potassium normal value is 3.5 to 5.1 mg equivalent per liter 3.5 to 5.1 mg equivalent per liter if your potassium value is high if your potassium value is high so in that condition you see that abdominal distension every time this question was asked in competitive exam if your potassium value is low if your potassium value is low less than 3.5 mg equivalent per liter or it's a hypokalemic condition that time you see that abdominal abdominal cramps in hyperkalemia in hyperkalemia you see that abdominal distension in hypokalemia you see that abdominal cramps in the patient after that dysrhythmia is there due to the sodium or potassium alteration after that you see that metabolic acidosis so metabolic acidosis under that metabolic acidosis you see in that kushumal respiration kushumal respiration so what is the kushumal respiration kushumal respiration it means when the kushumal respiration or metabolic acidosis condition is there that time the patient respiration style is increased rate the number of rate the normal respiration rate is uh, your 16 to 20 breaths per minute but at the time of kushumal respiration your respiration rate is more than nor, uh, normal respiration rate or we can say that more than 20 breaths per minute and depth and depth of respiration is also increased so under that metabolic acidosis you see that kushumal respiration so kushumal respiration is have some different different kind of situation like that k stands for the k stands for the ketoacidosis especially in diabetic ketoacidosis patient you see that kushumal respiration u for uremia u for uremia in uremic uremia condition also you can see that kushumal respiration as for sepsis in sepsis condition also you can see that kushumal respiration and as for the salicylate poisoning salicylate poisoning you see that kushumal respiration the salicylate poisoning is also known as the overdose of the aspirin overdose of the aspirin so overdose of aspirin so antidote antidote of aspirin or salicylate poisoning is the sodium bicarbonate first sodium bicarbonate first second your second second your second your active charcoal and third one your vitamin k also vitamin k also it is a different kind of the it, according to the overdose or according to that severity of poisoning or severity of overdose we are using that antidotes next methyl alcohol or m stands for your methyl alcohol poisoning so under that methyl alcohol in especially our rural area side in rural area side the rural peoples or village peoples preparing raw wines raw wines so sometimes that raw wines become it a poisonous why because in that raw wine the formic acid formation is occur the formic acid formation is occur so your this formic acid after formation after formation of formic acid this formic acid damage to your second cranial nerve second cranial nerve the name of second cranial nerve is optic nerve so after damaging of second cranial nerve or optic nerve the patient is complaining of patient is complaining of patient is complaining of blood vision so this is your question in methyl alcohol poisoning the patient is complaining of which some symptoms the answer is blood vision so this is blood vision so i want to tell one more facts regarding that vision especially in raw wine poisoning or methyl alcohol poisoning you see that patient complaining for blood vision and one patient he is taking morphine so overdose of morphine overdose of morphine or side effect side effect 
you are seeing that patient is complaining of yellow color vision yellow color vision is the earliest side effect of morphine is known as yellow color vision the next the one drug name is viagra viagra or viagra under that viagra the salt is sildenafil citrate this is the doc4 this is the doc4 premature ejaculation condition it is the doc4 premature ejaculation so the patient or the client they are using sildenafil citrate tablet they are complaining for complaining for blue color vision blue color vision blue color vision blue color vision so after that a stands for aldehyde formation aldehyde formation and l stands for lactic acidosis so this is your kusmal respiration kusmal respiration so after that we are discussing symptoms so you can see that dry mucus membrane thirst increased ter skin turgor decrease skin turgor decrease so skin turgor how to assess in different different types or different different methods we are assessing the skin turgor so if you are assessing skin turgor in adult in adult so the most common site is 4r most common site is 4r and the in children or infant the most common site is abdomen most common site is abdomen and after that after that the pass uh, the patient or child abdomen how it's looking like scaphoid scaphoid abdomen means your abdomen normal like that but in that cholera condition your abdomen is like that scaphoid abdomen scaphoid abdomen next the patient i is the patient is i is shankan i shankan i after that the patient is complaining tachycardia and tachypnea also the pulse pulse which type of pulse you are observing or which type of pulse you are notice in that diarrhea condition because here diarrhea is more than more than 40 times per day more than 40 times per day or a day so too much water or too much fluid is lost so the patient pulse is wire like weak pulse wire like weak pulse so for pulse we are discussing that grade a grades of pulse the grade of pulse are four grades 0 0 1 grade plus 2 grade and plus 3 grade so like that it's a four grades of pulse zero means absence of pulse absence of pulse you can see in the death die die patient die patient or die individual or decline plus one grade plus one grade of pulse you see that thread or wire like thread or wire like pulse you see that in shock condition your wire like thready pulse thready pulse and the plus two weak pulse or thready pulse you can see in diarrhea so your patient pulse is weak and thready pulse and plus 3 grade the pulse is bounding pulse bounding pulse it is seen in the overhydration overhydration or hypovolemic condition and you see that bounding type of pulse so these are the graded of pulse after that it's a bacterial condition so obviously and every inflammatory condition our body temperature is rise so you are seeing that you are noticing fever also in the patient so due to your potassium or sodium loss potassium or sodium loss the patient is complaining for the nausea vomiting and diarrhea is also there the diarrhea frequency 40 times per day rice water type of diarrhea rice water type of diarrhea next the diagnosis how to diagnose how to diagnose how to diagnose the vibrio choleric condition so first one we are seeing that history collection why because it is a, it is a fair condition it is a 
fair condition or fair disease after after attending some marriage function or functions we are within few hours to within few hours we have some diarrheal condition so in that time you notice that food and water bone stream water stream rapid deep stick test we are using for to diagnose the vibrio cholera this is your screening test this is your screening test of vibrio cholera and next one is the polymerase chain reaction of microbiological test of vibrio cholera next one is your stool culture stool culture so for this one the stool culture is your conformity test screening test is your rapid dipstick test and your conformity test is stool culture test so for that one stool culture how to for culture we need a sample we need a sample so how to collect a sample so for that one we need to a 26 to 26 to 28 gauge of catheter 28 gauge catheter and this catheter after lubricating this catheter tip we need to insert in anus of the client anus of the client the depth of insertion is 4 to 5 cm 4 to 5 cm Four to five centimeter. Four to five centimeter. This is your question. The insertion of um, depth of insertion in anus of catheter is four to five centimeter for taking sample. So after that, in which media we are using for culture of stool? The culture media we are using that thiosulfate citrate. bile salt culture media bile salt culture media thiosulfate citrate bile salt culture media we are using for the stool culture and next if suppose we are posted if we are posted in primary health center or community health center the cholera is mainly or majority of cases occur in the community side or rural side so you need to send the sample to your district hospital or your higher centers for testing so that time you need one transportation media also one transportation media also the transportation media the name is the name is vr media vr media the name is vr media is venkat raman ramakrishnan media the name of vr media the name of vr media is venkat raman rama krishnan media so this media we are using for transportation especially for transportation venkat raman rama krishnan media or vr media so if we are transporting that media we are sending that culture culture bottle so we need one sample bottle also so that time we are using a sample bottle the sample bottle name is mac cartini mac cartini bottle it's a total volume is 30 ml 30 ml volume of your culture bottle the bottle name is mac cartini bottle so this is your question next how to manage how to manage the diarrhea how to manage diarrhea in vibrio choleric condition so first one you see that prophylactic management prophylactic management under that we are seeing in a patient house the cleaning sanitation is mandatory to decrease the transmission of disease so for cleaning or mopping or sanitation we are using 6 mg per liter bleaching powder or crisol powder crisol powder so within seconds it kill the your vibrio cholerae bacteria and if the patient is if the patient is child so sometimes it defecate on the your bed 
your clothes also so that time we need to dispose with the stool so how to dispose with the 5% bleaching powder chemical disposal or deep deep burial method deep burial method through we dispose deep burial method so it's a decrease the transmission to others use safe and clean water it's a prophylactic way and vaccination of cholera also vaccination so vaccine of cholera is two types one is orally vaccine and second one is injectable vaccine so first one we are going to discuss that injectable vaccine the name of injectable vaccine the volume or dose is 0.5 ml the root of that injectable vaccine is subcutaneous root and what time we are going to give that vibrio cholerae injectable vaccine at a third month or at the sixth month so it's a clear we are maintaining that three month interval between two doses or second dose so next your orally vaccine orally vaccine wait orally vaccine so under that orally vaccine under that orally vaccine two vaccines are there one is monovalent mono valent the monovalent vaccine strain is vibrio cholerae 01 initially i told that vibrio cholerae strain 01 is monovalent bacteria vibrio cholerae zero one bacteria is monovalent bacteria the name of that vaccine is ducoral ducoral that name as wc vaccine the volume is 3 ml its a root is oral and its a contra indicated in less than 2 year child and the interval between two doses the interval the interval the interval between between two doses is 4 week and the storage storage temperature is 2 to 8 degree centigrade temperature and if you are if you are storing at room temperature room temperature that time you can store for one month one month so this is your question if you are storing that cholera vaccine so you can store for one month and next that booster dose that booster dose is the booster dose is you can give at 2.5 to 5 year 5 year age of you can give that booster dose so this is your oral vaccine name is uh, ducoral name is ducoral wc rbc that volume of single dose is 3 ml oral route contraindicated in less than 2 year child the between interval between two doses of cholera vaccine monovalent is the 4 week the storage temperature of that vaccine is 2 to 8 degree centigrade if you are storing at room temperature so you can store for minimum 1 month or after that 1 month it's may be discarded after it, it can not it cannot be utilized and the booster dose we can give at the age of 2.5 to 5 years next the uh, 
sorry. Bivalent. The bivalent name is Vibrio. Vibrio Colleri zero one three nine. Vibrio Colleri zero one three nine. Its name of vaccine is name of vaccine is Shankol, Shankol and Shankol and Mora Vax. Sorry, Mora. Morequex and Morequex. The two doses of vaccines are there. Two doses we are going to give next. That uh, booster dose. That booster dose is given at after age of. Two year and next. It's uh, contraindicated in less than one year child. Less than one year child. It's a uh, contraindicated. Next is your therapeutic management. Therapeutic management. So under that therapeutic management, we are going to discuss that mainly your medicines. So first one, the DOC of Vibrio cholera in adult age doxycycline. The single dose is 300 mg. The single dose is 300 mg. Next. Next. In children, in children, the DOC, the DOC is Cotrimoxazole. Cotrimoxazole. In children, the DOC is Cotrimoxazole. It's a combination of tri plus tri plus sulfa methoxanol. Sulfa methoxanol. So it's a combination of 1s to 5, 1s to 5 in combination, 1s to 5 in combination and in pregnant mother DOC of cholera is the DOC of cholera is Flu or flu, sorry. Ronida, Ronida Zol, Fluoronida Zol. Next, this is our therapeutic drug for chemo profile axis. Chemo. Profile axis DOC is also there. DOC is also there. The name is the name is tetra cycling. Tetra cycling for adult for adult and for children and for children also adult the dose is 500 mg bd for 
थ्री डेज फॉर चिल्ड्रन द डोज इज वन ट्वेंटी फाइव एम जी बी डी फॉर थ्री डेज एंड फॉर चिल्ड्रन इन दैट कंडीशन द एज ऑफ चिल्ड्रन इज फोर टू थर्टीन ईयर फोर टू थर्टीन ईयर एज ऑफ चिल्ड्रन एंड इफ द एज इज जीरो टू थ्री ईयर जीरो टू थ्री ईयर द डोज इज फिफ्टी एम जी फिफ्टी एम जी एंड बी डी फॉर थ्री डेज इफ यू आर गोइंग टू गिव दैट टेट्रासाइक्लिन सपोज इट्स एक्सपायरी डेट टैबलेट सो द साइड इफेक्ट इज फैंकोनी एनेमिया एंड द अडल्ट डीओसी अडल्ट डीओसी इज डॉक्सी साइक्लिन इज द मेजर साइड इफेक्ट इज major side effect is also diarrhea also diarrhea so why because it's a diarrhea condition it's already diarrhea is there after uh, giving doxycycline the condition of diarrhea is worse so it's indicating that doxycycline overdose is there or doxycycline its side effect is worsening of the diarrhea next fluid therapy so fluid therapy under that fluid we are giving some rl fluid also ns fluid also and dextrose so we are i want to tell one thing that isotonic fluid isotonic All these are the isotonic fluid. All these are the isotonic fluid. Isotonic fluid are those fluid the these the osmolarity. These osmolarity is between two forty five to three seventy four milli osmol per liter. those fluids are containing her osmolarity between 245 to 374 milli osmol per liter those fluid is known as the isotonic fluid the best example of isotonic fluid is the first one your ors ors or isoto uh, that osmolarity is 245 245 milli osmol milli osmol per liter second one your second one your d5w the osmolarity is 277 milli osmol milli osmol per liter and third one is the rl ringer lactate solution the osmolarity is 278 milli osmol per liter next your human blood human blood osmolarity is 294 milli osmol per liter and last one your normal saline your normal saline the osmolarity is 307 milli osmol per liter so these are the your isotonic fluid so this is whole about the cholera condition thank you thank you for your patience please subscribe share and press the bell icon of our youtube channel smart root academy so you will get the upcoming notification you will get the notification of our upcoming classes thank you guys thank you have a good day okay bye